afternoon, everybody. I'm Dr. Doug Masterson. I'm the Associate Provost here at the University of Southern Mississippi. And in an effort to assist students uh, in progress, uh, in processing, excuse me, your degree applications, we are moving our degree application process to a email format uh, for the rest of uh, this calendar year for 2020. And so this particular uh, webcast that you're viewing right now will be broken up into three parts. The first part will be for all users that are in the process, what kinds of equipment you're going to have to have to do this. Uh, it's all free Adobe Acrobat. I'll show you where to get that if you don't have that. And then we'll have a student component, so students will know exactly what they need to do to download the information that they need and how to get it to uh, the next person in the step. We'll also have a section on advisors, uh, giving you all the information that you all need to get the information uh, from the student and to where you need to push that. Um, and then finally with the directors and how you all need to handle these files as they come your way. So as you all know, we're, we're in kind of new unchartered territory and our old process was a paper process where students uh, actually took a paper form and, and sent it around and got signatures. And so we're working the best we can to replicate that particular process right now in the short time frame that we have to develop something new. I'm also joined in the office today uh, by uh, Ms. Twilia, Ms. Twyla Morgan. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Ms. Twyla Morgan. And uh, she may uh, have a few things to add uh, if I miss anything. So I wanted her to be in here should I, should I misspeak on something. So the first thing I want to say to everybody is uh, University of Southern Mississippi really is uh, doing everything that we can to make sure that you say stay that you say you stay safe uh, during this period of uncertainty. And I just want to point out to you our university website, uh, the USM Coronavirus COVID-19 Response. This, these um, uh, headers on these web pages get updated uh, just about every day. So if you have any questions. Uh, about what's going on at the university with regards to COVID-19, I highly recommend you go just to the University of Southern Mississippi website, uh, click read more, and you can find out what's going on, uh, where we stand with our levels, and all of that kind of information that you may need. And of course, don't hesitate to reach out to your advisors or your directors uh, if you have any questions, or, or, and your instructors if you have any questions about specific courses. But that's not the purpose of today's uh, webcast. Today's webcast is all about uh, all of our students being able to get their degree applications in on time for the summer and for our fall commencements that we have every year. So in this first section we're going to talk about the things that you'll need uh, to have in place to, to do this. Obviously you're going to need to have access to some type of technology. Uh, your computer is going to be the best thing if you have a laptop or a desktop. It will certainly work. We've tested this out on, on a laptop and a desktop and it works uh, quite nicely. There are several steps that we'll have to describe for you. The first thing you're going to need is Adobe Acrobat Reader. If you don't have that, uh, you can find that by Googling uh, Adobe Acrobat Reader. You'll come to a, a, a website that looks uh, similar to this and it will uh, give you a link on where you can download the free Acrobat Reader. So students, you'll need access to this. Directors, you'll need access to this, and advisors, you'll need access to this. Now, I know most of you do already have uh, Adobe Acrobat Reader on your computers or devices, but I highly recommend that you go in and download the most recent version to make sure that there are minimal issues with doing the fill and sign process that we're going to be talking about here in just a moment. So, those are the things that you're going to need. You're going to obviously need internet access and you'll need access to your email accounts. But those are the things that basically you're going to need for this process to occur. Let's uh, start off with what is it that students need to do. Well, number one, as I just mentioned, you'll need to obtain a free copy of that Adobe Acrobat Reader. You're going to need to log into SOAR and go to your student center as you always have and you're going to select application for graduation as shown below in the uh, print directions that I've sent you. But let me show you how to do that right now with a uh, fictitious student that we have, Seymour. So I'll log in as Seymour. And we'll get into Seymour's account here. 
I'm not going to save that. You'll see the Student Center for Seymour. So we'll click on Student Center. And what you'll see over here under Academics to the left is a drop-down menu. And it'll, it'll be populated with this thing called Other Academic. But if you click on the blue link, you'll be able to download your application for graduation. And that's going to be the important thing for you. So you're going to want to hit Application for Graduation. And then you're going to want to click this little grayed out um, double arrow, if you will, over here to the right of that box. And that's your Go button. When you click on that, it will take you to your application for graduation. It will tell you a bunch of stuff up here that you need to read. Read through it. All of the fields are required for you to complete this. You're going to put in some sort of address where you would want your diploma emailed to, or excuse me mailed to. So we're going to have it sent to one two three four Home Sweet Home Drive in Petal. Mississippi and we're going to put in our zip code. You'll put in some type of local or cell phone number in case they need to get in touch with you. You'll put in your expected graduation term. Make sure you click the little um, magnifying glass and it will give you a list. So if you are graduating in the summer you would pick this 4208 and I'm just going to pick that one but if you're going to graduate in the fall it'll be the 4211. Then you're going to hit Print Application Form. And it's going to work. Firefox popped up that it was blocking, so you want to make sure that you're allowing pop-ups for this particular website. Once you have downloaded your degree application form, you'll see that you have student information, which will have your name, your email address, your ID number, your phone number, your degree application date, or what uh, we call the print date, will automatically populate uh, your um, address that you typed in earlier, your degree information, showing your um, your majors, your minors, your college information, all of this is normal as you would see, but you can also see here that you have a place for your signatures and uh, other information, and then you have page two. You don't need to worry about page two yet. That will come uh, later when you are interacting with your advisor uh, by a virtual meeting or through email, however they're going to reach out to you to discuss this. So once you've verified that everything on your application is as it should be, at this point anyway, you are going to go into Adobe Acrobat Reader and you're going to uh, prepare this for your signature. So what you have to do is come over here to the tools bar and you're going to uh, click on this fill and sign icon. And you're going to click on fill and sign again and that's going to bring up this tool tab right here. Now you can use this AB tool to actually input information so if something happened to be incorrect on your on your form you could you could type it using that. You shouldn't need to do that so what you're going to do is you're going to come over here to the sign icon. It's right over here just to the left of this black dot and you're going to click on that and you're going to have a couple of opportunities to um, add a signature. You're going to click on this Add Signature button and it is going to bring up for you three opportunities to input your signature. You can type, you can draw, or you can use an image. We are not going to accept type, so ignore type. A typed signature won't work for this. We need a real signature. Uh, if you happen to have a JPEG image of your signature, you can use image and it'll work just fine. But for this purpose of this um, demonstration, I'm going to use draw. And so you're going to select draw and then you're going to use your trackpad to actually draw your signature. 
and it can be a little awkward. I think it works a lot better if you have a mouse, but you'll put your signature in. Once you have your signature, you simply click apply. And now you have your signature, it'll appear on the page and you go to where you need to input your information. So we're gonna put our signature right in that signature box. You line it up where you want it and then you click your mouse button and it will lock it in place. Then you're gonna come over to the date. You're gonna click on date and that AB tab will come up and you just type in the date. So today's date is the 27th. And now you have signed, you have dated your application. And so what you need to do now is save this to your computer. It's very important that you keep a copy of this on your own device. You can save it on your computer, you can save it in your cloud account, whatever the case may be. But you definitely want to keep a copy of of your um, of your application before you before you email it. So you're going to go to save. Save as. You're going to pick where you want to save it. You can anywhere you want to. I'm going to put it on my desktop. And you're going to save this with your W plus your ID number, your student ID number. And the semester you are graduating in. So I put I picked that we were selecting the summer graduation, so I'm going to put summer. And then I'm going to save that. Make sure that the format in your uh, for your file is listed as a PDF file. That should be the default for Adobe Acrobat. But just make sure. Then you're going to save that file. And at this point, you've done everything you need to do on your on your on your uh, on your form. You can close Adobe Acrobat at that point, and then you go to your email. Um, program and you can email your advisor. Now how do you find your advisor's information? You can find that again in your student center. So if you're looking at the student center over here on the right, you will see this advisor and mentors uh, box. And so in this particular case, the advisor is Courtney Robinson. You can click on the details and you can actually get the email address and everything that you need um, for you. So you can you can get that information there. If you don't remember what your advisor's email address is, etc., you can find that information uh, in in SOAR. If you have any questions about who your advisor is, you have two options. You can reach out to the to your school and ask the, the administrative assistant about who your advisor is, or you can reach out to the advising center and they can assist you in in finding your advisor in your school using that link that we have provided. So you'll send this uh, as an email attachment to your advisor and then uh, you're done for a while until your advisor reaches back out to you and sets up an appointment to actually go over all of the materials with you. This section is for advisors. Now advisors, you're going to be receiving a file from your advisee by email and that file should be named with W plus their student ID number and the summer that they are intending uh, to graduate. You need to take that file and you need to save it to your computer. I know they can exist in your email, but you really need to create a folder on your computer where you're putting all of your advising information in so that you can keep it straight. So as you're getting those files in from students, please copy those into a folder somewhere on your desktop, somewhere on your computer or your cloud account, whatever the case may be, so that you have access to it. Uh, the other thing that you're going to have to do, uh, advisors, is make sure that you download a copy of the student's current DPR. That's very important that it be current. So when you get ready to work that student's uh, degree application, or application for graduation, I should say, 
you're going to want to download the most recent DPR at that point. So you're going to go in, you're going to go into your SOAR account, you're going to download that DPR as you always did, uh, and you will uh, open that up into uh, Adobe Acrobat just as, as you usually do. Okay, You're going to want to save this particular file uh, to your uh, folder as uh, W with the student ID number and then immediately after that add DPR. So for this particular student I would save this file to my computer. I'm going to pick my desktop again. I like saving these types of things to my desktop and I'm going to save it as W with the uh, ID number and then I'm going to just type DPR and I'm going to save that to my desktop. So now I have both the degree application that the student has signed, I have the DPR in hand, I can go through and look at the DPR, I can know how many hours they have remaining, whether they've passed courses, all of that kind of stuff that you need to look at as you do an advising session. Okay. So now we're going to go back in and we're going to open the student's uh, application for graduation. So I'm going to open up that file right there. You will see that the student sent it to me. Uh, it's got everything that it needs to have. It's got the student's name. It's got their email address. It's got their phone number. It's got their program codes. It's got their major and minor information their plan codes. You need to make sure all of this stuff is there. Uh, if it's not, you need to reach out uh, and get that fixed. You'll see a place where you're going to eventually sign and date. Uh, but what you're going to be spending an awful lot of time with is on page two with the student. All of this information still needs to be completed uh, before you send it on to the next step in the approval. Okay, so you need to set up an appointment with your student uh, either virtually or through email or through a phone call, how, whatever works best for you, to go through each and every one of these items just like you were sitting in the room with that student. So I know when I advise students, we sit down and we look at the DPR and we go through this line by line and make sure that the student understands uh, where they're at, what they're lacking, what they still have to complete before they graduate. And so you're going to go through each and every one of these items just like you would if you were sitting there with the student. The only thing we're not asking you to do is get the student initials and your initials at this point. Okay, we're going to ignore that because that's going to be an awful lot of work in this, in this process that we have to use right now. Okay, uh, but once you're, once you're here and maybe you're on the phone talking with your advisee and you're going through these and having a conversation, you're going to fill this out in the PDF form. And you can do that by going to Tools, Fill and Sign, just like we did before, you'll, you, you'll click on the fill and sign. And when you're here, you'll see that this little AB cursor comes up. And so you'll see here it says 300, 400 level writing intensive requirement will be met. List course. Well, you'll look at the DPR and then you'll type whatever that course is. I'm, I don't have the DPR open immediately for me to look at, but let's just say it's this particular course. Okay, it doesn't matter. I've just inputted the course that satisfies that. The senior capstone writing intensive requirement will be met. List course. I can do the same thing there. Whatever it happens to be, you'll go through just like you would in a meeting with a student. Okay, and so we've typed all of that information in. We'll do that for each and every one of these fields that we need to do. Once we are satisfied that we have uh, properly advised the student for graduation, all that remains for us to do now is to put our signature in the advisor's signature line. And so you will go to sign up here using the fill and sign tool and you will be able to go to add signature and it'll pop up with uh, three options for you to sign the document. We are not using type. We do not want typewritten signatures. So really you only have two options. You can draw or you can use image. If you have a JPEG file of your signature um, on your computer or on a, uh, a, a, a stick drive or whatever, you can use your, your image of your signature um, just fine. 
you would just find the file uh, and then it would it would appear in this box. Most of you I suspect are probably going to use draw. You'll click on draw and you will use your mouse or your trackpad whatever and you will put in your signature and I always have trouble with it on my trackpad it works a lot better with a mouse so just to let you know if you're using a laptop I'd highly recommend you get a mouse you're going to click apply and that's going to give your signature a place up here on the um, document itself you'll move over to advisor signature you'll click and it will drop your signature in place and then you'll come over to date and you'll click on that and you'll type in the date that you processed it and so you are now done with what you need to do other than saving the file so you'll want to go in and uh, save the file again make sure it's saved with your signature and now you're ready to move this uh, degree application file and your uh, DPR file on to the next step okay now for advisors there are two steps that you have to think about okay that won't apply to all students but you got to think about what type of student you got so you're the advisor and if your student is a licensure student that is they're in biology licensure or chemistry licensure or English licensure any of the uh, licensure programs that we have at the institution you're going to take both of those files the degree application file and the DPR file that you have and you're going to forward those to Jennifer Wild for her to approve the teacher certification uh, information that has to be on that degree application so her email is jennifer.wild at usm.edu. You can look and find that information on the uh, instructions that I sent out to you. Okay. Once you send that to Jennifer, you're done. Jennifer will, will review it. If she has any questions, she'll get back in touch with you. And once she has done her approval, she will send it on to your director. Okay. That would be a step that you would take if you have a licensure student. If your student is not a licensure student, they're just a regular biology major, regular chemistry major, regular history major, whatever. As the advisor, you will simply take those files and you will forward them by email to your director. And your director will then do what they need to do in the process. So at that point, you're done with that particular student as an advisor. You can move on to your next advisee and everything should be good. Okay, now this section is for directors and what you need to do. Uh, if you've been watching this video up to this point, what you're going to do essentially replicates an awful lot of what the advisor was doing um, in, in a lot of respects. You will re be receiving either from Jennifer Wild, if it's a licensure student, or from uh, the advisor in your school, uh, uh, two files for each student. One of those files will be the uh, application for degree which is the file that I have up uh, visible right now and you'll also receive a file that is the current DPR which is this file so you'll have both files you need to take these files you need to save them to a folder on your computer so that you have access to all of this information as you need it this will serve as your copy if you will in case any questions arise Okay, so you'll open both of these files up in uh, Adobe Acrobat Reader. You'll review the information. You'll make sure everything's okay, just like you normally do. And then you're going to sign as the director. And so you're going to use the uh, fill and sign tool. You can find it under the tools uh, toolbar. I've already got it open. You'll go to the sign. You'll select add signature and you'll have three options. You can type in your signature, which we are not accepting, so kind of ignore that one. You can draw your signature or you can use an image of your signature. So again, if you have a JPEG file of your signature, you, you're more than welcome to use that. Uh, many of you, I suspect, will probably just draw your signature. And so this works with a trackpad or a mouse. I think it works better with a mouse, but you will 
put in your signature and you will click apply and you will move your signature to the director space you will so, uh, click that and that'll lock it into place and then you'll go over and type in the date and pretty much so you're done at this point with your review okay so you will have your information all um, all completed on the form make sure you save copies of these because you need a copy with your with your signature in it so you'll have to click save and then you're going to move it along uh, in the next step of the process so as a director you have two options basically if your student or your major uh, does not have a minor so that is they are a, a biology major or a chemistry major or a history major and they have no minor you will simply take the DPR or the DPR file and the degree application file or the application for degree file I should say and you will forward those directly to your degree progress specialist partner for processing and we are sending each and every one of you an updated list of which programs and who the degree progress specialist partner is so you'll simply just send those to your DPS partner and they will look at it they will uh, do what they need to do they will get back in touch with you if there's any issues but uh, once it's there they will they will begin the process however if you have a student that has a minor listed on the degree application you're going to have to forward the degree application and the DPR file to the director that houses or in the school that houses the minor okay so you'll need to figure out who that is you will send that to the um, uh, director of the first minor that's listed on the degree application so students can have more than one minor only send it to the my the first minor okay the first minor director will then sign using the same process that we have that I've just described here for directors okay because everybody's a director that's that's watching this this part right uh, and they will sign it they will save it and then they will forward that to the degree progress specialist partner for the major and then if there are multiple minors the degree progress specialist will work to get the other signatures from the other minors I know this seems like a convoluted process but this really is how our paper process works it's just we can't have students on campus right now running around getting everybody's signatures and so we have tried to workflow this as best we can even though we're using email but each student's going to be different you will have students who are major only pretty straightforward you'll have some that have double majors you'll have some who have a major and two or three minors and so each student will be unique and we're trying to uh, work through this as best we can if you have any questions uh, regarding technical difficulties please reach out to the uh, advisement center there's a link on that uh, set of instructions that I've sent you they'd be more than happy to help you figure out what any uh, what you're having with any of the technical difficulties with Adobe Acrobat or getting your signature into it uh, and also don't be afraid to reach out to your degree progress specialist if you have questions about the next step they'd be happy to help as well so with that thank you all very much I know this is a lot in a short period of time but hopefully we can continue to process our uh, student information get our students graduated on time and um, uh, keep our keep our students students happy and uh, not have any delays in their graduation or progress towards graduation so if you have any questions don't hesitate to reach out to me the degree progress office or the advising center for uh, any questions that you may have. I appreciate it and I'll talk to you all later.